Sorry, I was on a mute. That's a classic, people. <laughs> okay, so hello and welcome to Travel Tech in Mia Second Edition. Uh, my name is Paula. I'm going to be the moderator of this panel. I would like to start by saying thank you to Vinicius and Natalia and the entire Travel Tech team for having me here today and for the invitation to be the moderate, moderator of this panel. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be here today. Uh, this is Travel Tech in Mia second edition, which means that we already have the first one last year and Travel Tech is a series of events uh, that's focused in different markets. So we have Travel Tech in Mia like, uh, like we're having now, we have LATAM, we have APAC and so on. So thanks also to all the sponsors of the event, all the panelists, they're making this event such a great event. Uh, it's such a great event and you can find if you're watching us here now you can find everything about the sponsors panelists and the, all the agenda at travelspace.com uh, so hello everyone again and welcome to this panel revenue management strategies pri pricing your hotel on the current situation in emia uh, this is the third day of travel tech emia 2021 so that means also that we already have two amazing days uh and here with us we have special guests to discuss uh, revenue strategies revenue management uh which is such a crucial topic in the industry so greetings to everyone everyone that is tuning in thank you for joining us today welcome again and for those who don't know me yet, just let me say really briefly about myself. Uh, I said, my name is Paula. I'm the content coordinator at Ask Suite. Uh, Ask Suite is the 2020 and 2021 best chatbot in the, uh, for hotels in the world by Hotel Tech Awards. Uh, we are a conversational booking solution for hotels, chains, and resorts, and we focus on direct bookings. Uh, we have, I think right now, we have around 1,400 uh, clients around the world. So. It's pretty exciting. We're a global company. And a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been working in the hospitality industry for the past 10 years. I'm a former hotelier with a bachelor's degree in psychology and a marketer. So that's a mess, right? Uh, I create content uh, to educate and help the hospitality industry face all kinds of uh, challenges. And we have so much challenge. In, the, in this industry. Uh, I strive every day to deliver high quality and relevant content. I hope so. Uh, every day uh, I do that through the blog, as it's blog. Uh, so I write blog posts, ebooks, you name it, I'm doing it. Uh, I host podcasts, webinars, participate in this kind of event like this one. And to finish, uh, this year I was featuring the list of the global top 50 hospitality leaders by international hospitality industry which is quite cool so i thought it was worth mentioning but enough about me uh let's talk about the panel today that's why everybody's here so we will cover great topics uh such as hotels efficiency revenue strategy the importance of revenue management culture in a company company price automation revenue management role and more you can already see uh, on the screen that we have great experts to help us in this quest uh they're going to discuss these questions and the questions that you audience might have so please uh write don't be shy write your questions in the chat box there that we can we can take it uh during the this panel so i'm gonna start by saying hello finally how rude of how rude I am, right? So I'm gonna say hello to the panelists, they're here, and let them introduce themselves and their companies to you, audience. Uh, each one of them will have around two minutes to do that. And we're gonna, gonna start, and then after we're gonna start the round of questions. So, okay, uh, so we start with Vasilis Georgidinis. I um, hope I'm saying your, your last name <laughs> right. I'm so sorry if I just butcher your name. Uh, uh, Vasilis is a client training specialist at, at Idea. So, welcome, Vasilis. Thank you so much for having me here and welcome to everyone as well uh, joining us. I'm Vasilis. I'm a client training specialist with Ideas Revenue Solutions. Just um, approaching five years now in my tenure. Um, Ideas was founded in 1989 and since then continuously delivers innovative solutions uh, in revenue management software 
to the hospitality industry. Um, and over time, uh, by being acquired by SaaS in 2008, uh, has been at the forefront of innovation. And this is what sets it apart uh, in its field. Uh, my role uh, in Ideas is to enable our clients to um, really tailor our products and solutions to their strategic needs. So I have been fortunate to travel around Europe, Middle East and Africa uh, to a variety of hotels, um, a variety of resorts to educate sure. clients in revenue management. Um, I'm a hotelier myself, so I started in uh, front office operations, moved on to revenue management, but I always liked education. Um, and this is what brought me to ideas. I'm delighted to be meeting you all and really looking forward to our discussions. Thank you so much, Vasilis. We can chat after the show about our experience at Front Desk Agents because we have a <laughs> lot of stories there. Uh, well, next we have Fulvio Gianetti, CEO at Libra. So welcome, Fulvio. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for, for inviting me here. Uh, I'm delighted. So my name is Fulvio Lario Gianetti. I'm a CEO and the head of data science of Libra. Uh, actually, I'm more a uh, from uh, the statistics side, because my background is basically on statistics and machine learning. And um, my the company uh, Libra is a is a revenue management system, which is part has been both has been acquired uh, in 2020 from uh, Zucchetti Group, which is actually I think one uh, one of the largest. Uh, software provider in the hotel industry in the world since we manage more than 45,000 hotels. We provide software to more, more than 45,000 hotels worldwide. And, um, and uh, so what we are trying to do, uh, having uh, a big landscape of PMSs, channel managers and uh, POSs, is to uh, try to uh, cope with the fragmentation of the hospitality industry in terms of software, but so also in, term, in terms of data, and uh, uh, delivering innovation this, uh, in, this, uh, in this kind of situation where uh, I mean, there is a need of a, a centralized approach. So thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to continue this discussion. Thank you so much, Fulvio, and welcome again to the panel. Uh, next, we have Rita Silva. She is Cluster Revenue Manager at REM Hub. So welcome, Rita. Hello, everyone. Welcome as well. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, in this second edition. Uh, very excited to be, uh, to be here. Um, and so as Paula said, my name is Rita. I am Cluster Revenue Manager at REM uh, Hub. Um, RM start as Re um, RM Academy three years ago. So the main goal is to do trainings uh, uh, at uh, hotels. And the 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 I mean the funny thing is uh, uh, for for this type of training. So all around revenue management world. Um, the funny thing is not only for revenue managers. So uh, so basically we have. Um, people from um, reception, people from the reservations, groups as well. Um, and then uh, RM Up uh, uh, starts as um, RM Academy and RM uh, All-in-One. Uh, so that's why I'm here as a cluster revenue manager. So uh, we, we, we help on a daily basis and we have a, a very um, close relation with hotel, uh, not only with hotel managers, but all the team uh, in terms of pricing strategy, budget, forecasting. So all the strategy in, in, in terms of revenue management. Oh, so basically oh, okay. to, uh, to achieve oh, yeah. uh, uh, the, the maximum uh, uh, revenue for the, for the hotel. So very happy to be here and uh, uh, very excited to continue this journey with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hita, and it's such a relief for me to have a Portuguese name here <laughs> in this panel, <laughs> I have to admit. Uh, Rodrigo Neri is saying here, hello, everyone. This is a very important and interesting theme. Now it's much relevant to, to, to this hotel industry recovery. As new se segments has been created, the correct pricing is crucial. Yes, Rodrigo, we will talk about pricing just in a few minutes. Uh, but let me first welcome James Robson, uh, Customer Success Manager at Inforso. 
Welcome, James. Hey, thank you. Uh, firstly, I'd like to also uh, start off by saying a big thank you to Travel Tech for the opportunity to take part in today's uh, forum. It feels really good to be surrounded by the great glitterati of the RM world, so uh, really excited about that. Uh, my name is James Robertson and I'm a customer success manager here at Info. Uh, we're a large uh, company with over 18,000 employees spread all over the world and we have a presence in around about 145 different countries and territories. Uh, thousands of hotels and resorts are using our cloud-based uh, suite of hospitality solutions and that includes uh, we have property management systems, so the PMSs, uh, sales and catering solutions, point of sale, and of course, uh, my beloved revenue management solutions, EZRMS and hospitality price analyzer. Uh, I'm based here in London. It's fairly gray and wet and rainy today, but that's London. <laughs> Nothing really changes there. Uh, and my background is firmly in hotels where I've had various roles, mainly in RM. Uh, but then around about, what, seven years ago, I decided to dip my toe into the world of tech uh, and moved from being an Info Easy RMS customer to being on the, on the payroll. And voila, here we are today. Uh, I can see that we have a really good panel and I'm really looking forward to the discussions and hearing what everybody has to say. So yeah, that's me. Thank you so much, James. I don't want to be, um, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't want to annoy you, but I'm in Rio and I see Rodrigo Neri is also in Rio and it's sunny and a beautiful day. So sorry about that. Man. <laughs> I want to say hello to, to Natalie. Oh, sorry, go. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to just say hello to Natalie. She said, hey, also, hello, Natalie. Thank you for joining us today. And next, uh, let me welcome. Johan de Peter, I'm, hopefully I said something right here, Johan. Johan uh, That's very director. good. That's very good, honestly. You said it very uh, well. It's not oh, an easy name, but uh, no. you said it very good. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> thank well, you so much, Johan. Johan, just for me to say you are the managing director at Revamp, right? So welcome and please introduce yourself. <laughs> yes. Correct. Thank you. Good afternoon. And also thank you Travel Tech for inviting me to the session and also organizing the event. So indeed, uh, so my name is Jochen de Puter. You said it very well. And I'm Managing Director of Revamp Hotel Technologies. So besides my role as Managing Director, I'm as well a consultant for operational and strategic advisory services in the hospitality industry. So that's more to the investors, to owners, asset management uh, for, for hotel performance optimization. And before that, um, I have worked 10 years in uh, several roles in the hotel distribution and hotel technology. So uh, from there, my interest and passion for hotel tech. Now, uh, compared to some bigger brands, you, you might ask yourself, uh, who the hell is Revamp? <laughs> what does Revamp do? So uh, very briefly, so we are a Swiss-based startup company and we develop and market innovative uh, solutions to increase hotel revenues and that is based on artificial intelligence. And we do that together with our sister company, Acquaint in Croatia. And well, in like most uh, hotel tech companies, uh, our brand name does not equal our product name. So we don't have a product calling revamp or whatsoever. So uh, we are quite agile in our solutions that we offer. So we offer both bespoke solutions, tailor-made, and also standard solutions. So for example, we developed mobile pace manager revenue management system. Um, if you want to know more about that, uh, I can warmly recommend you to follow uh, tomorrow's session at, uh, at 4 o'clock, uh, the pace session session and yeah for now um well I'm, I'm very happy in fact to join this panel and this forum I, I saw all the forum so far and i hope i can make it as as interesting as the previous forum so thank you thank you johan and i'm sure you will do a great job here and uh, next uh, this is my the the hardest one for me now i'm trying to say right ul zugerenson maybe CBDO at Guru, so please let me <laughs> welcome and introduce yourself. <laughs> you will. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, you totally butchered my name, but uh, I am very used to 
that. I mean, Joel is, so uh, is quite quite easy, but uh, the rest of the name, you know, just just say whatever, and it's fine. That's kind of where, where I'm at. Uh, yeah, my name is Joel Sigurdsson. I am uh, the business development manager for GoTo property in uh, Iceland. Uh, we are a tra uh, our foundation is just being a traditional uh, PMS company, uh, and we built on top of that with uh, additional services uh, that we do for our, our clients. And one of them, or one of the main things is, is revenue management. We've been doing that now for our, our um, PMS clients for about yeah, five years uh, now. Uh, <clears throat> I've been in the um, hospitality industry for 19 years. I might not look like it, but uh, that's fine. Um, we have a, uh, about about eighty to ninety percent of the island, uh, so we almost service everybody in in Iceland currently. And uh, revenue management here has been uh, gradually becoming more and more and more important over the years. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my introduction, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, you're you well and so sorry about your last name. My name is not easy neither when I'm doing international panels, so I feel your pain. <laughs> Let's no, I, I, I would I would totally butcher all of your names, so like uh, <laughs> it's completely fine. Well, thanks for understanding. Uh, so I'm gonna just say hello to Elena here. Hello, everybody. Greetings from Madrid. We have another Natalie as well. Good morning, afternoon, listening in from UK, representing Profit Room. So thank you, every, thank you, everybody, that is joining us today. Uh, before we start the round of the questions that we're going to start now, I just want to remind, remind the audience that we do have the comment session, as you can see, that you're saying greetings. But you can also put, post your question so, for the experts. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Uh, if you have a question about revenue management or anything in this world, uh, in this department, please uh, write down your, write your questions and we do our best to answer it so we're gonna go for for the round of questions now and each panelist has a few minutes to answer their questions and we have a couple of minutes to to discuss between us if anyone wants to to add something uh and again we encourage uh the audience to interact with us so okay we're gonna start uh with vasilis uh vasilis uh before your question uh, it's interesting because yesterday i was actually doing another webinar and I read a statement that goes to your, it, it fits well your, your question, because it says uh, in September 2021, the commerceclub.org survey revealed that 94.5% of surveyed hotels worldwide are struggling with staffing. So your, and your question is about that. It's how to do more with less, right? How can hotels be more efficient and profitable with fewer resources? So. Please, Vasilis. Thank you, Paula. And I must say, it is a very common theme appearing in many client engagements I am having the past few months. Uh, but there are already three major changes taking place in the industry that we need to acknowledge that can actually allow hotels to do more with less. So it could be a blessing in disguise. Um, we are seeing a convergence and consolidation of roles, a greater focus on technology, and what it can deliver, and a shift towards more automation and profit optimization. Let me break that down a bit. Let's touch on the convergence topic first. Um, there is a push towards consolidation, particularly of hotel management roles because of the staffing issues, uh, and a renewed focus on collaboration through the pandemic that can have positive impacts, I think, beyond cost control for a hotel. So the revenue managers need to start thinking about how to use data from various departments to optimize more revenue streams and figure out what contributes the most to their bottom line. So we are, I think, observing a shift from being a revenue manager to being a commercial strategist. So if, let's say, we are to rename them now, commercial strategists will need to leverage the technology they use and let their systems do the heavy lifting, give them more time to analyze and act upon the business intelligence that they have gathered in collaboration, though, with other hotel departments. We can't be working in silos anymore, which actually brings me to the technology. Everyone is under enormous pressure to ensure that the rates they put out reflect real-time market trends. 
and this is where solid property management systems and central reservation systems that integrate with a revenue management system can become really important. There is so much data out there, we all know that, but an RMS can actually turn them into actions. So what I would suggest is that hotels partner with a revenue management software that not only generates prices that adapt to market changes, but also considers the competitive landscape and a guest's willingness to pay. So in a crisis like the one we are still really in, the COVID-19 pandemic, some hoteliers do tend to uh, overreact with very drastic price drops. I think a revenue management system must aim for an optimal price, even in times of low demand, ensuring that the price selected is relative both to the level of demand and the price sensitivity that exists to avoid what I unfortunately sometimes see a race to the bottom. So consolidating that commercial structure and being technologically fit, I think will allow revenue managers to focus on the ultimate objective, which is to drive profit. And what I mean now is focusing on profit, not only on top line revenue. You might say, Vasilis, this appears a bit over ambitious right now. <laughs> um, but I think there are very tangible ways to start this change um, and help transition your hotels to achieve profit optimization. Um, I think there are five key areas to take action on. The first one, and the obvious one, is optimizing room revenue across different business segments. The second one is managing and optimizing your channels. So think now about transaction costs, your cost of sales, the cost of acquisition. The third one is ancillary spend. And I think this spend for some hotels might be a game changer in making better revenue decisions overall. And the fourth one is servicing costs. So has anybody really thought how much does it cost in terms of servicing a one versus a three night length of stay? Could this help us determine in a different way what the optimal business mix should be for a property? And for some other types of hotels and resorts, um, other types of inventory can be extremely profitable revenue streams. So think now about rental or other inventory such as cabanas or beach chairs, for example, for a resort hotel. So if I was to summarize what I uh, currently observe in the industry and what the industry needs to adapt to, first and foremost, we need to expand the revenue management discipline and establish systems that enable you to measure and optimize profitability across all revenue streams. Secondly, understand the guest value. So collaborate with other departments, tailor products and services according to what guests want and price those effectively with the right technology. And last but not least, go beyond the guest room. Look at your various outlets and determine the best path to incorporate those revenue streams as well. Refine standards, refine connectivity, and have systems that speak to your revenue management software bring people and technology together to drive collaboration and therefore i think greater revenue opportunities as well well thank you so much vasili so you gave uh, many great tips there in, in in one just one answer uh hopefully everybody is writing down everything and i i must say that well, revenue management is not my expertise. Uh, I used to work in a hotel and smaller hotels, and we already were understaffed before the, the COVID, and now it's even worse. And most of hotels that are independent or small, smaller ones don't even have one revenue manager uh, per se. So I cannot think that how can a, how can a hotel can take good, make good decisions without the data that you mentioned and this uh, support. Um, I think, like you said, I think it's changing now. And But at least here in South America, it was still uh, something that people didn't real, didn't realize the, the importance of having. Uh, you, you're saying that you, you're seeing the shift. Do you, do you see that more hotels are, are using uh, data, uh, relying on data instead of guessing? <laughs> But the data is just numbers unless we do something with it. And I think this is what um, the industry as a whole is starting to, to realize. Yeah, that's a great answer. Uh, thank you so much, Vasilis. Uh, I'm going to go to the next question then. Uh, and it goes to Fulvio. 
And Fulvio, your, uh, your question is, which are the three most important dimensions hotels need to take into account in their revenue strategy for 2022? Because everybody's already looking for the ne next year, of course, have the eyes on the next year. Yeah. Um, so 2020, 2022 is close to us. <laughs> it's opening his doors to us, hoping that will be better for anyone, healthy from safety and all those things. What we uh, are trying to uh, are trying to do, uh, we um, in this uh, during this period is just uh, uh, following what uh, Vasily said before um, is creating before uh, an ecosystem uh, where we can get the data. So centralizing the data, I think, is the, was the most important part because if you have no access to the data, you cannot make any calculation on the data. And since, uh, due to the fragmentation of uh, the, the industry, was uh, was very important starting from this, uh, and at the new data sources, uh, data sources that can be uh, can be uh, interesting only if we uh, combine those data, because uh, the hospitality industry is, is uh, actually produce a lot of data, uh, but no, not all this data. Are analyzed because it was not it's not impossible it was not not possible analyze this data at all because we missed the infrastructure below. Uh, what we did is to uh, start from uh, uh, one side. So we um, actually we 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 create a sort of data lake uh, able to uh, centralize uh, searches website searches of like uh, thirty thousand hotels actually. Where we uh, where we um, get the data, the searches, so uh, the the demand, the potential demand in terms of how many days uh, uh, people are searching, from which country, uh, which category, which kind of um, room types they are looking for. Uh, this is very important because uh, if we have to sell the right uh, the right product at the right price at the right time, we should know in advance who is looking for that specific. Uh, that specific product. And uh, in this case, we have uh, with the opportunity to at least track this uh, this uh, this part. And uh, the second uh, the second way uh, the second point is uh, um, having time in real time. I mean, uh, having data in real time. Uh, this is very important because um, we I think. Uh, the, the 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 hospitality industry is a pro. Uh, the searches are a flow. The, uh, how people uh, approach to uh, when they search for something is a is a flow, a continuous flow. So we have to analyze all those information in real time. And obviously, we need a, a good infrastructure below to have the opportunity, the power to analyze all those things. It's not easy. That's why uh, we we are in 2022 and just started this project because. Obviously, uh, there was no the technology ready, and the costs were so high before. Now, uh, the, the the cost of uh, building this kind of technology is not so high. I mean, not anyone, not, not everyone can build this, but obviously the costs are very <laughs> lower than ten years ago. Um, and the, and second, having a holistic approach because uh, uh, having 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 analyzed with looking for a specific uh, product, then we have to understand. In terms of segmentation, what we can deliver to them in terms of offer. So, after, because at the end, uh, in every, uh, even revenue management, what we do is analyzing demand and offer. So, after understood, understanding the demand, we need to understand what we can offer to this client. And obviously, even here, we need to have a holistic approach, not only through revenue, but also analyzing all the other revenue streams, like spa, like uh, uh, F&B, like uh, meeting rooms. And this is a, a very, very important, because uh, only only uh, if we combine those two parts, demand and offer, we can say that we are selling the right product to the right person at the right price. Um, what we are doing is like is uh, is uh, we are moving toward this direction. Uh, since uh, as it's a Zucchetti Group, we manage more than three hundred thousand posts worldwide. Uh, we we have many softwares uh, delivering uh, for for spa. Uh, also, meeting room. What we are doing is merging all those uh, those information to uh, our system. 
uh, trend, because we want to like a revenue management system should be at, at the center, not the calculator that transforms, as you said before, the data in, in action board, in something to take an action, because the risk is that uh, T, the, the TMI index, that what we call TMI index, is too much information. So you get stuck there, uh, it's uh, a, a never, you, you are not able to get any decision in the end. So we have to filter to reduce those uh, data into specific information, actionable information for, for all the customers. And that, thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Fulvio. And, I, and again, uh, so many great tips as uh, Vasilis. And I think it was interesting you both touched the point of uh, unifying data and not being in silos. I think that's that's important to understand the overall picture. I think I think I think many hotels still look at different silos, uh, and and that doesn't work. And uh, Again, I'm not a revenue expert, a revenue management expert, so I'm putting myself uh, like a, an audience. I am an, the audience here, and I'm learning from you guys. So, uh, uh, full view, uh, if you correct me if I'm wrong, one of the things that you said is like you track the path. You the data make made it possible makes it possible for you to track the path, so you can understand and predict. Uh, what it, you predict what it's going on it, it, is that correct or am I totally out yeah <laughs> yeah and, and and I think you mentioned it but then it's so many data right <laughs> yeah it's uh, in this case we are talking about big data uh, in real terms big data uh, obviously uh, when you when you cope with big data uh, there are a lot of calculation you have to do no because you, you have a lot of data but there are some noises behind. You have to remove noises. You have to get the, the, the real information within the data and um, transform this information in something that can be understandable and can be combined with other information. Uh, at the end, you have to provide an action. So all this data, big data, must be a small action. <laughs> Yeah, that, that that's it. And uh, it's no no point of just collecting and not taking action. That's a great point. Uh for you and any one of the panelists at any time if you wanted to join in the conversation after the, the panel the speaker has finished, please feel free to and and, and you have the space. Uh, I'm gonna just say here to Richard saying hello from hi from London. Very interested in all views of pricing of service and apartments and apart hotels. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and Richard and Natalie are saying hello to each other, apparently. Uh, and I'm uh, going to go to the next uh, next question that goes to Rita. Uh, should revenue managers implement a culture of revenue management in the company in different departments? I think it goes a little bit about silos that were mentioned before. I'm not sure. So, Rita, can you explain a little bit about what is uh, culture of revenue management and how you can implement that and be sure that your company is is right on the track yes um so well i'm a revenue management trainer so i <laughs> so i i i'm very pleased to share my uh, uh, knowledge about uh, uh, revenue management mainly so the culture of revenue management in the company is crucial because um so first of all we um all we Sorry, uh, we all know that uh, uh, revenue management uh, is a, a very important component of uh, in the hotel business. However, it's a little bit more than that. Okay, so revenue management is a culture and a philosophy. And building a culture uh, in hotel industry takes time. Okay, so first question: as a revenue management, uh, as a revenue manager. How is your relationship with uh, hotel management, sales department, uh, marketing, reservations, I mean, front office? So do you do meetings um, weekly, daily? If not, you you should, um, because um, hotel management, I mean, sales, sales and marketing department, uh, front office team, uh, all, uh, uh, we need all to agree and have the same, uh, vision and objectives as as us as revenue management and of course conflicts can happen and uh, in, the, in it need to okay uh, so basically weekly meetings are are necessary to share everything 
in order to set short, medium, long-term strategy all together to uh, increase revenue because uh, uh, once again, the main uh, goal of uh, revenue uh, management is maximize um, revenue. And mainly now, due to COVID-19, we need to adapt, all of us, not only uh, revenue managers, but all, all the team, because strategy has changed, okay, and continues changing. So don't be afraid to experiment or um, try a, a, a new type of uh, um, uh, strategy in, in your hotel. Um, so, and share, share information because the pandemic has destroyed uh, uh, the usual uh, way of life um, of hotel business. So basically, uh, we as revenue manager, we can no longer see the, um, the past. So the historical data or the trends. Uh, um, so basically, uh, basically we need, uh, uh, because we need to, to, uh, uh, to make uh, the, right the, the, the right decisions, okay? And using effective tactics. So, uh, um, so basically uh, this all, um, we need to, to share this uh, with, with other uh, departments. Um, so this is about communication, okay? So the revenue manager uh, managers uh, must have very good communication skills um, in order to build relationship with uh, with the hotel, with everyone, okay? From the line staff, so basically from reception, um, F, don't forget, of course, F and B department, uh, to the hotel management, and uh, uh, some cases to the owner, okay? So basically, it is uh, very important. Uh, I'm taking the, exam the example of front office team. So um, explain them not only the strategy, but um, what is in the back of the strategy. I mean, uh, rate plans, uh, which is the, 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 the rate plans of the, of the hotel, um, the segmentation of the hotel, um, and then speak a little bit about about strategy. I mean, front office uh, 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 for upselling, for example. So they 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 should know about uh, once again segmentation, red plans, how to how to uh, um, do uh, the right the right uh, reservation with the right segmentation. Okay. Um, so this is very important. I and about sales and marketing. It, it's a it's a crucial relationship. So because we need to um, basically um, to do our strategic plan. So sales plan, marketing plan. So strategic strategic plan. So basically, um, the revenue manager should be uh, um, adapt. Okay, to this type of uh, uh, situation and. It is not enough to, de to develop an effective uh, uh, strategic plan on the paper. So basically, we need as revenue manager to be able to um, speak with our uh, our colleagues, and once again to maximize to maximize uh, um, revenue for for the hotel. So um, do meetings on a weekly basis, for example share your uh, KPIs, uh, I mean, occupancy, uh, ABR, uh, ADR, sorry, uh, REFPAR, um, all the revenues as well is very important for the total, uh, the total REFPAR. Um, and um, yeah, share, share with, the, with the team, create a culture of revenue management inside your organization. Um, because I truly believe that all of us can build a successful revenue management culture in our hotel. And for me, it's done. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. I think Johan would like to add something. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I totally agree with uh, Rita. And I like that she takes the work of cult the word of culture and I'm out on strategy. Uh, I think uh, often in hotels, there is too much to focus on the functionality 
of the revenue manager, which is uh, basically increase or decrease prices of, of the rooms. But um, I think uh, this culture kind of shows um, the, the holistic view that should be in a hotel uh, considered. Um, so along the customer journey, uh, before arrival up to departure, there are many ways how we can increase the revenues. And, and that's why I, I really like the point that, um, well, it's, it's not only about the communication, of course, which you have in, a, in a revenue management culture, but it's also like the revenue managers who kind of dispatches um, with other head of departments, you know, how can we do this? How can we do that? And uh, yeah, I, I think that is very important what uh, Rita has uh, mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. And I think James would add, would also like to uh, add something. Yeah, uh, Rita, just a quick question, uh, and I completely yeah. agree that uh, building that culture within the hotel of RM is super important, and I think it's really is now part of the responsibility of the revenue manager, which is, is to Zillis's point about changing from being uh, really focused on changing prices day by day to being more of a commercial strategist. But when we, we think about today and, and what's going on in the world with uh, working from home, a lot of for RMs and now doing more for less with maybe multi-site or being clustered. Do you have any tips that you would suggest for the, the working from home RM or an RM that's not necessarily going to be on site to be yeah. able to build that culture into the, the hotel? Yes. Um, so basically I, 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 can, I, can, I can use my, my own experience because I was before RM Hub, I was a revenue manager only for one hotel and I worked there every single day with the team. Mm -hmm. And now at, uh, uh, at RM Hub, I'm, I'm at home. Not today, but, okay. but normally, <laughs> normally I'm at, I, I, I am home. Uh, but uh, we can do meetings as well online. So of course, uh, the challenge is different because we we uh, I mean we are not personally uh, 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 um, meeting, but um, but I think uh, and it is my opinion that this type of this type of meetings online or not are crucial. Okay, so and we need to prepare the, that type of meetings as well, like by bullet points, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to be more focused. I mean, for example, my previous experience, I, I, I did a, like a revenue meeting weekly and the, the, leader, the leader, of course, of that meeting was the revenue manager. So mm -hmm. basically sharing the, cap, the cap, um, KPIs. Uh, so on the books versus uh, um, forecast versus budget. Uh, and, and basically the main goal is to involve all the all the team because it's not only the goal of revenue management to achieve the budget it's a team goal okay yeah. so um so basically um i think our responsibility as well is to share uh, yes. i mean more information uh, uh we share uh i think all the team has an extra motivation as well to, to go to work or to do more or to maxi maximize mm. uh, um, revenue. So basically my, 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 my tips here is try to, um, try to uh, uh, um, start by doing a, a weekly revenue uh, uh, meeting um, and, and, and try, okay? So, um, and we, we we always get a space to improve so next we will be better and and so on so basically stay together <laughs> and mainly this on on this uh, on this uh, uh, situation that 
and there is well, definitely there is definitely an appetite i think to share information now i think more and more revenue managers realize that because, uh, yeah. and take all that business intelligence translate it to something that a reservationist uh, and a front office desk clerk can understand so that we can tell the story behind the numbers and that and then we're much more likely to align the organization with the business objectives and actually do something that will drive greater revenue and profitability as well absolutely i think we have a question here yeah um, yeah are we gonna <laughs> we have to unfortunately we have a limit time here mm -hmm. uh, i can see the pe people are writing some questions and we are taking one at a time but go it's still it's still uh, moving forward otherwise we're going to be here three hours okay. uh because it's such an important topic and everybody it's really engaged so thank you uh, the panelists and thank you also for uh, the audience. Uh, I'm gonna just say here hi to David. He said uh, hi to us. Good evening, regards from Malaysia. And then he said Natalie, good subject for today. So it's a good feedback for uh, Nat uh, for Natalie. Uh, okay, we're gonna go to the next question, as I said, and then we're gonna go back to some of the audience uh, questions. Okay. Uh, next question is to the it goes to James and it's about pricing automation. So James, uh, price automation. Is it a gain or a loss uh, of power for revenue managers? I'm guessing this is a little bit <laughs> uh, controversial. So go ahead, James. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I have the power. I am a superhero. Um, is that what you mean? Is that kind of thing, right? <laughs> uh, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe where to start is to to have an understanding is what is uh, pricing automation uh, and for me that's the ability for a hotel uh, to use a tool maybe a, a fancy macro max spreadsheet or a off-the-shelf solution that can autonomously calculate pricing decisions uh, maybe bar rates or length of stay uh, bid prices and hurdles or, or even a combination but then have those uh, decisions automatically pushed out to distribution platforms like a channel manager or a CRS. And there's, there's a wealth of great solutions that are already out there that pretty much covers the needs for the majority of hotels and, resource, uh, and resorts. Uh, but the question posed was, by using an automated pricing solution, does an RM gain or lose their power? And I think by power, we mean that sense of control over their pricing uh, and Personally, I truly believe that every RM is a superhero. Uh, and I'd also like to truly believe that RMs have the power, uh, the time, the determination to review and update their pricing strategy once, twice, three times a day. Uh, and also, let's not forget for the full horizon of their forecasts. So, if they can do that, I think that's uh, that's a hell of an achievement right there. But I'm not sure if that's really the best use of a superhero's power. And thanks to COVID, uh, hotels are happen having to adapt to the new normal and rethink their commercial strategies. And RMs have an absolutely huge, massive part to play here, we're talking strategies to find and conquer new source markets, uh, switching business mix to better producing segments, managing the relationships with OTAs and B2Bs so that they make sure that they've got a presence uh, on all the channels and that it's well-priced. Um, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. I think that list it just gets longer and longer with every border that closes or uh, travel restriction that gets implemented. Um, and then all of this is happening at the same time as Vasilis made the point earlier that we're being asked to do a lot more with less, where we're seeing RM roles being clustered and having to look after multiple hotels. Uh, so I, I really feel that it's important that our superheroes have tools, automated tools that do all the legwork, so that, that boring, repetitive stuff, um, tools that work at the weekends as well, and ultimately tools that save time and allow RMs to focus their, their knowledge, their experience and their skills to where it really matters, and that's to drive that commercial strategy, uh, not spending their time checking what's the price that they have for a Sunday night in March next year. 
And I suppose as a vendor, it's super easy for me to sit here and say automation, it's an absolute no brainer and every hotel should have one. But we also need to understand it's a little bit of a mindset change, uh, a change that embraces technology, which in hospitality, I'm not sure that we're always that keen to do. Uh, and also letting go and trusting a machine and trusting that it can do just as good as us. Uh, and having a bit of a gear shift of letting that control be, I just need to manage by exception rather than having to micro level check the minutest detail of that Sunday night in, in March next year. Uh, but I think if we think of the bigger picture, it, it does allow us to focus the RM's power to where they can really make an impact. And I, I just echo again Vasilis's point that to me, that's a, a, a gear shift in the role of being the traditional RM, which is sitting, doing more inventory management and uh, pushing out through the channels, but really becoming commercial strategists. So. Uh, for me, in short, and I, I'm sure the panel have different uh, views on that, having automation pricing solutions, it's not really about a, a loss or a gain of power, but more the ability to evolve that power for the development of strategies and becoming more commercial. So I, I would be interested to have the view of the, the panel on that as well. I couldn't agree more with you, <laughs> uh, but... James. Um... Uh, I hear that all the time. Um, I want to trust the automated system, yeah. but um, uh, users find it hard to relinquish control uh, sometimes. And, and I tend to ask the question, so can you tell me why you think this price is better than what the automated system recommends when we take into consideration the demand patterns and, and all all the patterns observed in, in the data. And I still cannot get a direct answer to that, um, which goes okay. to show the role the the human emotion then uh, plays in into decision making uh, but more and more we're seeing a shift and it's a mind shift and it's a strategic shift and it's an industry shift but i think it's more and more welcome uh, in the industry right now and it needs to happen right we, we can't mm -hmm. be sitting with all this technology out there in the market and we're spending hours every day plugging in price day by day for the next 400 days it's just it's it's not efficient anymore and not just the flexible rate think of all those linked products that we need to start thinking about a lot more dynamically than in the past we mm -hmm. used to be thinking oh i will always have a semi flex or an advanced purchase of 15% off the best flex but what if exactly. the better discount is 5% or 10% on another day so mm -hmm. i think that's where the opportunity is as well with automation Absolutely agree. Yeah, if I can uh, add the uh, uh, sure, go ahead. More part to this interesting conversation from a, a technical point of view. So I think one that one of the opportunity that you have when you apply automation is that also that a system can optimize based on tests. I mean, uh, in revenue management, obviously. Uh, is a soft science, so you don't you cannot reply the experiment. Uh, uh, what you can do is test, like doing a B test, trying higher price, and then see how the market answer to this kind of price. But think, do this every day for 360 days in advance. You cannot not do control. You cannot control manually all those things. Obviously. Only an automatic systems can do the checks continuously, uh, understanding how the demand is uh, is uh, and the demand the offer matches. And uh, I don't think that any human can do this. Uh, obviously, you can do for one day. You can say uh, it's better this price than this price. But think to doing this for all your room types, for all your rates, for 360 days in advance in advance is impossible for for anyone. So uh, this is very important. So doing multiple thousands of A-B tests, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the key anyway at the end to optimize. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to agree with all of you because I, I it's not only in revenue management, the adoption of uh, technology. It is much more psychology, psychological than, yeah. uh, like like Vasily said, and uh, James also, 
people are reluctant to to rely on the technology we see that in marketing and every other sector there and i think uh, if you have especially in revenue we have such a massive data to process it's impossible uh like you were saying so let the machine do what they do the best right and yeah. let humans do the what they do the best right yeah. it's uh, yeah, it, it is a mindset, like you all said, mm -hmm. it's a mindset. And I think Rodrigo said something really interesting here, and I would like to maybe someone, of, one of you, if you want to jump in and, and talk about it, because it's talking about strategies. Uh, strategies will be very relevant because we didn't have historical data. Uh, uh, historical data, we are almost two years without a massive demand. Of course, we are in a completely different <laughs> situation. So forecasts should be, should be, should be made weekly, daily, or whatever we need. Must be hard for a revenue manager. Yes, manager it is. There. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think it was Fulvio that said about the predict the prediction. It's a little bit based on what the historical data, and then now you don't have the data because you're like in this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no one could would imagine the situation. So how to tackle that? You experts, if you anyone wants to jump in. Maybe I could make a comment. On, uh, for me, I completely agree that that historical data is now a little bit more redundant. But um, I think an area that RMs can consider more is, is looking at pickup trends, uh, even something as simple as uh, destination of travelers. So you can see that you may be getting more bookings coming from the Middle East it or from a, a country that you haven't necessarily worked with in the past. And that could just be because those borders are open right now. So I think, yes, there's less uh, emphasis or need of historical data, but the view should change more to the pickup and the bookings that's happening today. And, and just you need to identify small trends from that and then form strategies around that. Uh, and it just comes back to that A-B um, testing. It, it, there's going to be a lot of that until there's some stability in the market. So for me, um, yeah, less reliance on historical, more focus on on the books, pick up, uh, and the, the what's happening today to try and identify new opportunities. I have, for example, a real case because one of uh, one of uh, a client of RM Hub is in uh, in Austria, and all you know that Austria is on lockdown. So you can imagine that forecast is not made uh, once per month. So right now mm -hmm. uh, we really need to to uh, uh, to get in touch uh, on a daily basis, okay, just to check uh, uh, the, the 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 cancellations. Um, so for mainly for November, but for December um, as well. So yeah, we never know. <laughs> so. This is a real, this is a real case, uh, uh, and and uh, uh, I I believe that you guys uh, uh, have uh, um, uh, your cases as well. So uh, yeah, should be made on a normal. I don't know if you have a normal <laughs> right now or will be have, but basically uh, uh, it's a case by case. Okay, as uh, for example. In my my actual uh, experience, um, it's a it's a case by case, hotel by hotel. Um, so depending, it's not anymore like a forecast that we do three four months in advance, and uh, uh, we we don't change it. We don't change it. Uh, now this is completely different. So uh, it's weekly let's say well uh thank you and uh, anyone i think would have opened or say something or uh, I I would add, uh, uh, on that a bit on what rita is saying basically what rita says is that we need agility uh, as has changed so much and i think uh, this is the new normal that we live in so uh, i read once uh, an article uh, stating that like in Every five years, there is a 75% risk that your business will be disruptively affected by an event, such we have now COVID or 9-11 or, or what else may come in the next five years. 
So I think uh, this geopolitical context, this macroeconomical context will play a much bigger role in future, in fact, that we really have to see uh, well, what is the future bringing, what is the news bringing. And in terms of COVID, um, what is long haul uh, distance travel again allowed from China, for example, uh, for cities as Vienna, who suffer a lot from the absence of uh, long haul distance. Uh, travel. So I think those, um, well, macroeconomical events and, and those um, changes, uh, well, will come more and more. And, and that's why I think to have a system where we can be agile in making the forecast and, and to, to be vigilant, in fact, uh, of what's going to happen uh, month by month, uh, day by day. Uh, all I just wanted to add to that is that there will always be uncertainty in everything that we do in life and even in, in revenue management uh, as well. But there is still value in, in the data, even in, in periods of low demand, because we, we're speaking about the new norm, the old norm. Could it be that it's just the norm and there is still things to be learned by looking at the most recent trends that we see? So what James was saying about pickup, that maybe we need to focus a bit more on what is on the books right now rather than going back to three or two years ago. Uh, but you can learn from um, that downward trend or upward trend if you're recovering and educate your strategy through, through the information you gather from all your systems. So I think, yes, although two years ago, the data from two years ago might not be as relevant uh, to inform the current strategy, they can still act as a very useful benchmark that revenue managers can use to, to forecast. And, and otherwise, I would agree with Rita, it's something that can be on an as needed basis, particularly for those hoteliers that are starting slowly to manage more by, uh, by exception. I think Fulvio wants to say something before we go to the next question. Yeah. I think that the, the historical data is still important. It's always, it's always important. Now it's the second year we are in the pandemic, so there are some trends, some uh, some uh, uh, trends that we can analyze easily better than two years ago at the beginning was a very certain change. Uh, now we more or less uh, we, we we understand which are the patterns, um, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, for example, uh, one of the things that usually happens is that when we miss there is for any reason uh, for a, a lock, new lockdown. We, we see, a, we see uh, even when we receive information from DTB, we see suddenly something change in the booking window uh, in terms of pickups. So, uh, but uh, when I analyze the, this data, your question, the question is, are we missing, totally missing this part? So we lost those business or is business moved, shift to another booking window? And usually this is happening uh, so for, for some hotels, for many hotels in uh, many situations that you know, that uh, are like are following these uh, these patterns. For example, uh, usually uh, in the in the cities now is happening this. The booking window is very short. Uh, so when we think that we will never achieve the the, the, the budget or the, uh, the the forecast that in the last. 20 days we fill up the hotel because uh, there are those kinds of trends that you cannot analyze in the long term, but your your frame of analysis must be lower and you need to adapt, obviously, to these things. Thank you, Fulvio. Uh, I'm going to go to the next question and I can see, Richard, that you're having two actually questions that we will take it, Richard, in the there's someone that is watching us. Uh, I will take them uh, in a few minutes, Richard. I haven't forgot about you. I haven't forgotten about you. I'm going to go to the next question that goes to Johan. And uh, Natalie was saying before, Johan, when, when you were talking about uh, uh, the, the last question, she said, I agree, Johan, the customer journey begins from the moment they land on your website, just making sure that you get this good feedback. Uh, so, Johan, uh, what are the opportunities for improving revenue management? Uh, in your opinion? Uh, yes, I, I kind of mentioned already a bit uh, when uh, referring to uh, Rita's uh, answer. So it's this holistic approach, uh, which is not only internally in the organization, but also externally towards, towards the customers. And when we speak then about this uh, customer journey, we see a lot of opportunities rising, in fact, to 
uh, drive demand, which is also part of increasing revenues. And to drive demand, you have to sit together with the sales and marketing team to make appealing offers to, to the target clients. And then we have the uh, converting the demand. Uh, that means with uh, online website optimization, uh, maybe some reputation management, which goes back then to the front desk. Uh, then we have the upselling pre-arrival or along the customer journey. And uh, well, post departure also engagement. Um, so we see in fact that this role of revenue management is spread across uh, well different moments in the client journey and also the different departments as already uh, said by, uh, by Rita. So uh, we speak about the sales and marketing, um, about uh, um, the website, uh, then finance also, the cost of distribution, uh, not only to focus on a higher ADR, but also lowering the cost of, uh, of your distribution. So uh, I think that's a very first uh, important uh, key point to see within your organization. But then externally, I think also we may not forget as a hotelier, that we sell a service and, and not a product. And maybe not for one or two star hotel where you just have a bed, but definitely for four or five star hotels where you have uh, segmentations and even individualiz individualization, if you go to a five star deluxe, there is a different willingness to, play, to pay for each different guest. And I think there is an opportunity um, that we need to understand much better the client uh, and have information on that in order to get the best offer out for him. Um, so I think from that perspective, externally uh, towards the client, we can definitely improve and even we can chunk that up, as I already said, uh, also macroeconomically. So uh, we have now, of course, uh, the COVID situation. So for example, uh, we see currently that uh, prices are soaring, uh, energy costs are soaring, uh, labor cost was also a problem uh, that was already mentioned. There is no staff left, so the, the salaries, salaries increase. Uh, people need to pay more to get less. And this will also translate in the ADR for, for next year. So um, you have to see this bigger picture uh, to see for next year, prices will all increase. So ADR will definitely increase as the inflation in Europe at 5% and the US as well. Next year, it will be also a high inflation expected. So this is increasing. Um, also the movements, for example, where we um, see with the COVID measures um, that we have more transient clientele and less business groups. Uh, leisure groups so logically more the bar is booked as before so if the bar is booked more as before the ADR and average is also higher so there's these these things are not directly interpreted um, from a revenue management system but uh, it's this the holistic mindset um, uh, as already said the holistic mindset that is quite important in fact uh, for the revenue manager to oversee um, the whole, uh, well, the whole situation. And I think uh, as refer referred already to James uh, before, I think here is essential that we move from a more functional um, role of the revenue manager to a more um, strategical role uh, where the technology supports, in fact, to do the daily activities. Uh, if it is a CRM, if it is an app selling tool, if it is a revenue management system, I have seen up selling tools um, at the customers and they converted 10 to 15% of the office that was sent out. I have seen hotels, it was an, a hotel in Düsseldorf, about 100 rooms. They made 1000 euros per day just by the up selling tool, which was a kind of automation um, if I speak about ourselves, about mobile pace manager, we generate 43 euros for each click the hotelier makes. And it doesn't take effort, it's, it's just automation. So I think for this more functional operational part, um, we should have IT systems, whereas uh, for this more holistic view, we need a kind of polyvalent person or a revenue manager who knows of everything something and dispatches then the responsibilities within a 
within a department within the spe- within a special with the specialist so for example the sales and marketing specialist uh, the IT specialist the one who does uh, the website uh, so i think there we have uh, progress um, to, to see the bigger picture in fact of of revenue management uh, thank you. Uh, but, and uh, Natalie is adding to your uh, question, uh, to your answer. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. So Natalie is saying, bookies engines need to be easy to use for the customer. They need to be intuitive and always after an alternative solution package data room. Should their, cho- their chosen one be unavailable? And she continued, it's easy to overlook or else they will just return to the OTA website, which goes back to the cost of, of acquisition. Uh, uh, and then David is saying to you, true, every sales on rooms bring the extra revenue. So uh, the, before anyone wants to, to, to join, uh, any of the panelists would like to, to say anything, I just wanted to thank, I thank the audience again because we're getting a lot of questions and we're trying our best here to, to manage all the questions and answer them. So thank you so much. Uh, like Rodrigo was saying, and I think it was before, I think it was uh, the next, last question. And I agree, in this new normal, verified the co- economy, how the countries are going on is very important because we will know the segment they are trying to get is reacting. And overall, it's much important. So people are really reacting to all the panelists. So thank you, the panelists, too. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to say something or should I go to the next question? We do still have one more question here. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next question, and then and any time anyone can continue. So I'm gonna go to uh, you all now. You, uh, this question is for you, you all. Uh, is the role of revenue management post how? What is the role of management? Sorry, role. <laughs> what is the role of revenue management post COVID? We're talking a lot about roles here. How is it going to be different in your normal dynamics? So please, you go ahead. Yeah, that's going to be quite different, uh, in my personal opinion, at least. Uh, obviously, we're always dealing with uncertainty. I mean, that's the role of revenue management in general. But now it's just it needs to become a bit different than only pricing. I think uh, revenue management uh, revenue managers for the future need to be a bit more creative than they might have needed to be in the past, not the revenue management itself. Uh, one of the things we have uh, had to do is, for example, just contact the embassies of our biggest market and tell them to change their country back to green. It's not red anymore, stuff like this. Um, and as we have already discussed here, the, the data is, uh, of course, it's always going to be relevant. But uh, w- once you have a year of basically nothing or, or little to nothing, uh, that uh, year is not going to tell you that much. Um, so instead of like the regular seasons that we're used to having, you know, summer, winter, we have festivals throughout the year, New Year's Eve, all of this. Instead of uh, being able to foresee that quite uh, logically into the future, we're dealing with like little micro seasons instead. Uh, the festivals, they, they're they up, we get a lot of bookings, then all of a sudden they all, they all get cancelled, all, all, of, all of this. And we might get a huge spike in the middle of the month of, of a month that we usually don't get anything to us uh, it's just because of the external factors maybe COVID is uh, okay here in, in the country that you're in and uh, and okay in the countries around you or your or your markets um <clears throat> so in that regard i think having a, an automated system is going to be even more crucial than it used to be because a human being is not going to be able to spot all of these micro seasons if i can call them that uh, far into the future so you need something to kind of alert you that you know th- these things are going on um the um i have also seen a big spike uh, for travel agencies uh, post covid and i think they are going to be a lot more important than they used to be like we we used to talk about travel agencies as a, as a dying market but there's some certainty in dealing with the travel agency versus uh, OTAs. Uh, at least uh, we've been seeing a huge spike in that. We have a, at GoTo, we have a GTS system that's uh, called Travia. 
and uh, and a lot of hotels uh, here in Iceland, Travia and the uh, travel agency booking are exceeding booked at, uh, the traditional DAs. Sorry, let's uh, not mention any names. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of how I see it. It's going to be a bit more creative. It's going to be a bit different. We, uh, you have to look a lot of, uh, at least here in Iceland, uh, you can't really go to the country without flying here. So we have to look heavily at the airport. I mean, in mainland Europe, it's always different where you have countries around where people can, you know, basically drive to your, uh, to your hotel. But uh, at least for us, we kind of have to look at heavily what they what the airlines are doing the prices of the airlines the uh, the frequency of the flights are they adding new flights uh, and for what period are they are they doing that um yeah that's uh, kind of how i see it and, and and a lot of hotels just in this covid period tend to just lower everything just dump the rate down to the to their minimum rate and also give that uh, rate to travel agencies. And I think we should always be in the mindset of uh, that, you know, the future is going to be normal. Let's approach the future like that. And then later back back down if, if, if needed. Because uh, if you sell yourself quite low into the future and all of a sudden, you know, COVID is kind of well, not, not over, but maybe over for that particular time. Then you might have just undersold your entire hotel while well, you could have gotten a lot more. So I think the role of revenue management post COVID uh, needs to be uh, uh, somewhere between an artist and a, and a business person rather than uh, only uh, uh, business and only focused on the, on the numbers and the, and the data. So I think that's going to follow us through throughout this period in, in, in rough terms. Well, thank you, you are, and then Richard making a provocation here, I'm sure. He's saying, is revenue manager more important than general manager? Please discuss, and he's just saying, not really. I don't think anyone would like to... Is there a, a general manager roles, over so. here? <laughs> is there any general manager here? <laughs> well, not in the panel, but probably in the audience. So if, if you want to take your chances, Rita. <laughs> I, I, I no, don't think I'm... it's a competition. It's two different, completely different uh, roles. It's, uh, yes, yes, absolutely agree. Uh, but so... sometimes, just let me just add, sorry, Rita, you're going to go after just, uh, they are completely different. But again, in, if you think, think about small, uh, mid-sized hotels, is the general manager that I kind of have to do? Well, with, doesn't I, really have the knowledge, I guess. Sometimes. Yeah, well, it, first of all, I think depending on the general manager. Okay, so basically I am the specialist of uh, revenue management. Okay, so in terms of uh, pricing strategy, uh, we have to be aligned, of course, with mainly with the, the, general, the general manager. Um, once again, depending on the general manager, because... Uh, for example, I, I work with a general manager and he was in the past a revenue manager. So depending. So uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> uh, uh, but but I, I mean, I as a revenue manager, I am a different a different revenue manager that my general manager was in the past. So, because it's different times, uh, different methods that we have nowadays, uh, new technology. So it's uh, it's quite different. Uh, but the goal has to be the same, okay? And the strategy is is the same. Um, my my experience says to me that uh, everything regarding pricing, it is with the revenue manager. So I have I have real examples that general manager has special requests. For example, he or she needs to uh, uh, ask revenue manager about the about the price, because we as revenue manager we we see all the figures every single day. Uh, so and uh, about future demand about forecasting. So we know we have to know the best price okay for the best room for the best guests 
So even, even requests from the general manager or whatever needs to, uh, uh, needs to be with revenue manager. Groups quotations, for example. It's not only sales, okay? It's sales and revenue. Because we have to analyze, okay? Once again, future demand forecasting, uh, uh, trends, uh, what's going on, on in the city, it's a congress, it's, a, it's something. I'm forecasting a 100% occupancy for that for that day. So we need to maximize create overbooking, for example, <laughs> but with a higher with a high price. So uh, I I uh, I agree that it's two roles completely different. Okay, but we have to be in line with the with the general manager in terms of uh, uh, hotel strategy, uh, because once again the goal is the same. So the goal uh, it's my goal, but it's the hotel manager uh, uh, as well. So, <laughs> if I can, add, uh, sure, I will continue on this because I think that the general manager has to look at different metrics. Because obviously, when you, we talk to our optimized optimization, we mostly, I mean, 80 percent, we're talking about operational cost. Um, the, the, but if we look at the, uh, from the point of the view of the general manager, the situation is different because uh, oh, more in this period of crisis where many hotels are struggling to survive. This is, was very because of problems, uh, for example, cash flows. So here, uh, it's not the, the, the problems start to be very serious. I mean, they need most of them. I, I think in most of the hotels are small hotels. Let's say uh, three, four star hotels, independent hotels, most three, two, also two stars hotels. So, uh, what they, they need is having cash flow in the short term during the crisis. I mean, the most need for them was this one. Uh, also, working with the um, uh, working networking capital, it means risking to have money now and uh, probably delay the payment for, for the future. This is a, like a loan for them in financial terms. But all those uh, things that for hotels, general managers are very important, probably uh, are not, uh, is a kind of information that uh, usually are not passed to any revenue manager. So they don't know what uh, was happening above. So probably the concept of optimization sometimes cannot be the same of the general manager. Uh, and this happened quite often during this uh, period, of course. Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, both of you to adding this uh, value in this, in this conversation. And I remember something that actually we were talking before and Rita brought it up first about the culture and communication, people knowing everybody in the hotel, knowing what's going on, the strategy and all. And remind me uh, when I was a front desk agent and I was talking to uh, before and we had to this... Um, how do you say, how do you call it in English now? I forget the name, but when people come in the, to check in without reservation and then walk you in. negotiate, sorry? Walking. Walking, walk in. thank you. Oh my God, uh, thank you. Uh, so when you have walkings and then the, I was in the front desk agent, I was a front desk agent and they were like trying to negotiate the price and you have absolutely no idea how much you could go. And then the general manager was not there around and then you, no, that, know, that's you, why that's why that's why uh, uh, it's about like once again it's a, a little bit about culture so yeah. uh, every time I, I I I leave the hotel so I know the occupancy for that day how many how many rooms and and so on and I know I know for that day we uh, maybe we'll we'll have one two three uh, walkings or not walkings like uh, 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 requests by by phone by email so there is our bar no, I mean the best available rate okay and and normally um, depending once again the the occupancy but okay uh, five percent off ten percent off or uh, work with uh, free upgrade imagine that we have Im imagine standard and deluxe rooms so try uh, try to uh, to um to sell a standard okay with the price of a standard uh, but offering an upgrade to the to the deluxe uh, 
um, or try to know the purpose of the stay. It is the first time in the city, uh, try to upsell as well uh, for a, a, a most, uh, uh, like, a, um, I mean, a bigger room with the view, um, space, comfort, whatever. But uh, in terms of rate, um, it's, I mean, 5%, 10% off um, around, um, around that. Breakfast included or not, uh, add values. Uh, but try, try to, um, I mean, uh, you don't know the client. You, you have to, uh, 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 I mean, sometimes I say that uh, we don't have the wallet of our guests. <laughs> so we, we have to, we have to, to, to try to uh, meet their expectations. So once again, it's not, sometimes it's not only pricing, but about the product and front office uh, uh, as that hard work sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I think the hotel that I used to work for probably had some uh, issues, the economical issues with me in the front desk, because I would, I remember I would give a, like, I don't know, a master uh, room and then would charge like less than the standard. And then the next day, the general manager would say, no, why you did that? And it was like, oh, but I only have like, yeah, I didn't understand but, the whole concept. But you did, so. but you did, you, you did. So next time, see, next time yeah, you but, will try not to do the same thing. Yeah, so. exactly. But if you have this alignment before, like you were saying, this kind of thing would not happen. And I think it happens quite often, I must say. Yeah. Uh, and some, so sometimes so. Uh, ah, I'm, I'm checking on booking.com, expedia.com. Yeah. I'm checking competition. and <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's the worst one when they show you the, mm -hmm. the cell phone on your face and it's like, oh, my yeah. God. But it's different costs. Anyway, so we're heading to the, the, the final. Uh, we're almost finishing here, uh, fortunately, because I could talk to all of you much more uh so if you're watching us now and you still have questions still have time to to write on uh, the chat box there so we still can take uh questions from the audience uh to finish i thought that we could uh i'm gonna just say what topic uh to all of you and then each of you have like two three minutes just to to to, to answer this topic that which is what are the opportunities for improving revenue management. I think you can all add something there. So I'm going to start with you, Vasilis. Uh, what are the opportunities for improving revenue management then? Your final thoughts. I, I always say, see even the pandemic as an opportunity. Yes, it happened. Nobody was expecting it, but it's here. No one knows how long it is here to stay. Hopefully, we'll start seeing more and better recovery across different regions and markets. But I think it's time that we start rethinking the role, the roles we have in in hospitality, um, and go beyond what we had as a certainty. Um, we hear a lot uh, hoteliers saying we need to drive more rate now, but I would say maybe now we start we need to start thinking more about cost control because we can't just keep pushing and pushing and pushing price similar to what was being discussed earlier about inflation and it would be very easy to drive adr but are we are we driving profitability i think this will be the main and biggest opportunity for the industry to capture now is the time to go beyond the guest room look at um revenue management in a much more holistic approach, uh, focus on revenue streams that um, truly provide you with profit, um, what costs more, what costs less, so that we tailor products that will satisfy our guests on the one hand, because without them, hotels wouldn't exist, but on the other, we maintain viable commercial operations. I think we need to bring the two together and having a viable commercial strategy can work in favor of a good customer and revenue culture as well. Uh, I think the two go hand in hand, they don't go separate. <laughs> I think that's where the biggest opportunity is, move beyond the guest room, start speaking more about profitability and being a bit smarter with our sales, um, cost of acquisition, uh, cost of servicing our rooms, so that we can make better decisions. 
Thank you, Vasilis. And the same goes to you, Fulvio. Uh, what are the opportunities for improving revenue management? Your final considerations here. I would, I would like to start, to start very far from any technology uh, thought. Uh, starting from education and culture, uh, because before doing uh, optimization analysis, people must to have the, the right culture. Otherwise, you, uh, uh, I don't know, but I used to say you cannot export democracy into Afghanistan in some way, no? Because um, sometimes uh, you need to, um, not to export something, but educate people to to be able to receive those kind of information. And, uh, and this will be very crucial uh, before, because technology goes fast uh, anyway, anytime. We know that in any, not only in our industry, uh, but also in other industries, when there are the technical innovations, the, the, usually the culture takes more time to achieve, not the, uh, to, to get that point. Uh, so we, we need to be more, uh, give more importance to this part, cultural educational part, also in revenue management uh, to, uh, to enlarge the audience of people understanding what we're saying. Thank you so much, Fulvio. So I'm going to go next to uh, James. Same question. What are the opportunities for improving revenue management in your opinion, your final thoughts and considerations? Uh, yeah, final thoughts. I think trying to be ever the optimist as well, that um, maybe we should see this whole COVID pandemic thing is a bit of an opportunity. Uh, and for me, that opportunity would be to, well, two areas. Uh, the, the role of the revenue manager, take this opportunity while forecasting is a bit issue and all these uh, changing strategy to become a commercial strategist to really move away from that whole traditional view of uh, trying to uh, manage the day-to-day -day micro processes which can be automated. Uh, so step one would be change role to try and embrace more the commercials as opposed to the day-to-day -day. and and then try and just to automate the boring stuff you know all these things that we used to do manually in the past if there's tools out there that can help us to do them better and as we've already said that the human brain can't possibly do all these different combinations embrace these tools which allows us to have that more time to work on developing the role to become more of a commercial strategist so that would be my two points automate the boring stuff and pivot towards commercial strategy Thank you so much uh, James and I have to agree since I'm, I like writing not so much a data I, I cannot believe that people like to do Excel spreadsheet sheets and all that. And it's like, why you don't automate it? <laughs> uh, you are, same to you, goes to you. What are, what are your final considerations about the opportunities for improving revenue management? Uh, yes, I have uh, written three points, uh, which I think are important. Uh, so first of all, while well, during the COVID period, uh, while well, we saw many hotels that had negative GOP, uh, so better they were closed and the only thing they did was burning cash. So it would have been a nice moment in time to, to reposition and reconsider yourself as a value you bring to customers. And, and with that, uh, I think the goal that they want to achieve when you reposition is to make the guests pay more for getting less at the end. And I think that is a bit what they have, what hotels should try to do to, to pay more for, for getting less. Um, that can, for example, be when we speak about uh, departmental profitability, uh, the spa, which is often, well, a cost or which are kind of break even. Um, well, how can we use the spa to reposition maybe to a wellness destination? Um, uh, well, to, to bring a new type of clientele who comes, uh, well, for wellness treatments, who is willing to pay for the products, etc., as just having uh, a swimming pool and, and, and some treatment rooms uh, in the hotel. So I could use, in fact, the opportunity to, to completely uh, reposition and, um, well, see what's in the trend and, and make it happen that uh, people um, experience more value in, in what they get and are willing to pay more. Uh, at the same time, also for less, meaning, uh, well, there will be less staff needed when we need, when we have more technology, you know. Um, and if we speak about the revenue management in particular, 
the technology for him will definitely support in uh, well CRM actions, in um, in, in upselling, in, in in setting the prices. So I see some efficiencies can be done. Also in restaurant uh, or room service with technology. Um, so and and this is maybe the moment also after COVID to to make that repositioning because people are still a bit. Um, confused, uh, they are open to change and they, ex they accept a new reality. Uh, so yeah, I think it's the moment in fact to reconsider your value deal. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Johan, and go to Joel Ewell, I think it pronounced it right. Uh, your final considerations on improving, how to improve uh, revenue management, please. Yeah. Um... I also teach uh, hotel technology uh, in uh, the university here in Iceland. And uh, this is something that I've gone over with my students uh, quite a lot. And I think the main opportunity is basically just to rethink the entire thing. Just to rethink all the, like how you approach historical trends, how you approach length of stay, booking windows, the new patterns uh, that can arise. What I mean is, uh, now we're in a situation where it's completely different than it was before. So now we have to rethink it. But if we can, what uh, in the COVID period that we uh, had to rethink, what can we take post COVID as well? Uh, what can we learn from it and, and use? And I think, uh, like I mentioned before, like um, having micro seasons, not uh, summer, winter, and all of that. I think rethinking all of this uh, can um, can help us for the future. Um, you know, mar the market segmentation now it's completely different than it was before. You know, how can we learn from that and approach it differently and just take every every single thing that we do step by step and just rethink it from scratch instead of thinking uh, in it in the uh, traditional sense. Thank you so much, you and then finally, last but not least, uh, Rita, your final considerations about, oh my God, so sorry. <laughs> your final considerations about the improving revenue, re uh, revenue management, please. Sorry. Yeah, so I, I, I agree that uh, Joel, jo Joel, Joel, sorry. If Absolutely. I'm not Absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard okay. name for us, Rita. Don't feel, don't yeah, forget. yeah. Uh, I completely agree with uh, with him. So it's time to rethinking about everything. So as I said earlier, uh, strategy has changed. So we really need to rethink about strategy, uh, um, uh, um, not only pricing uh, strategy, but all type of strategy in terms of revenue, in terms of costs as well. And um, however, I think nowadays we have to be concerned more and more about um, guest experience. So as, as, as Vasilis mentioned, it's not only to push rates. Uh, so we need to know the guest experience, the guest journey as well. Um, and someone mentioned that it is very important to know the client before arrival. So all the study that we have to, to make before the guests come to to our um, hotel and um to um to to end um it is a very very good time as well to do trainings okay so uh, uh for example at rm academy by rm hub okay so we do trainings uh, revenue management forecasting pricing so on so i think it's it's a uh, uh, um it's a good time to to know a little bit more uh, to to know uh, a bit more about revenue management through trainings as well. So done for me. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Well, I think that's it for uh, for this panel. At least everybody, I want to thank uh, all the audience for their comments, saying hi. There's someone that just entered now and say hi from Argentina. It's Juan. So hi, hi Juan. We are finishing now, but you can watch the recording, and I think you should because it was a great panel. Uh, Rodrigo is saying that he is a REM student. It's nice to have 
the new generation participating too. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us in this panel. I want to do remind the audience that you can go to travelspace.com and find all the information about the panelists, their companies, and you can see their agenda and you can see the, uh, the events agenda too. Uh, the panelists, you can find their, uh, their LinkedIn page there on travelspace.com. So I just want to say goodbye to each of you. So starting with you, uh, Vasilis, thank you so much for being part of this panel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate and, and thank you all for the amazing contributions and insights. Thanks, uh, Rita, for also being part of this panel. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the participants. And once again, thank you, Travel Tech, as well. Uh, thank you, Fulvio, also for being part of this panel. It was great having you here, Fulvio. Thank you very much. Thank you, all of you. Uh, it was very interesting uh, to me be part of this very interesting discussion. So have a, have a nice day. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you, James, also for being here with us today, James. Thank you. Thanks as well to everybody. It's been super interesting and nice to meet you all. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Johan, uh, for being here too and, and, and being part of this, uh, this panel. Thank you, Paula, for the invitation and also to Travel Tech for, for the uh, organization of all the events. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. And finally, thank you, Joel, for also being part of this amazing panel. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's been an, uh, been my honor. Like, good to be here with like-minded uh, people. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Uh, Juan is saying, "Oh, I'm kind of sad because I just entered here now." So, uh, but thank you for such a great, uh, such a good time. I'm the one that have to thank you all. You made my jobs that much easier uh, with all the interactions, uh, the panelists and the audience. So, thanks everybody. Uh, Travel Tech Emilia is still going on. So you can go to again to travel um, travelspace.com and check their agenda of the event. Uh, have so so much uh, so many panels to go and and they are all very interesting. So thank you so much, everybody. Uh, see you next time. Then bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 See ya. Thank you. Bye. bye.